Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to give an introduction to understanding income and substitution effects. So I'll just flag that what I'm doing is called a Hicksian analysis of substitution effects. In another video I will go through the alternative variation which is the Slutsky approach and I'll link to that below in the description when I'm done. For the most part though, I think that the Hicksian is the most common approach. So if you don't know what I'm talking about and just want to know about the income and substitution effects simpliciter, you don't need to worry, you're probably in the right place. So I'm just going to start by going through a recap of our setup. Our starting point is here. I have two goods, good one and good two, which corresponds to X1 and X2 on our axes. We have a budget constraint here, which tells us the different bundles of good one and good two that we can afford given our income and the prices of the goods. And any bundle on the line is going to completely exhaust our income. So that budget constraint, I've called it BC1. Lastly, I have some indifference curves, which are a visual representation of our preferences between good one and good two. I've also noted down here that P1 denotes the price of good one, P2 denotes the price of good two, and our income is denoted M. I've isolated our optimal choice, which is bundle A, and this corresponds to X1 star level of consumption of good one. Now the optimal point here is the tangency point where the slope of the indifference curve, which is our marginal rate of substitution, is equal to the slope of the budget constraint, which is the negative of the price ratio P1 over P2. So this point will put us on the highest indifference curve that is possible given our budget. So I do have other videos that can support you here if you don't understand this diagram. I'll link to them in the description. The concern of this video is understanding what happens when the price of one of these goods changes. And in particular, let's think about the effect of a reduction in the price of good one. The first thing that's going to happen is a pivot of the budget constraint outwards and the intercept on our horizontal axes is going to be further out before. So a new budget constraint and I'll name it BC2. An easy way to see why this has happened is to recall that our axis intercepts represent how much of a good that we can afford if we spend all of our income on that good. And we find our intercepts by dividing our income, which is M, by the price. Well, if the price of good one decreases to say P1 prime, and I'm just noting here that P1 prime is less than P1, then actually this ratio of income divided by the price will be larger. Intuitively, if the price of good is cheaper, then with our income, we can buy more of it. So the new horizontal axis intercept will be further to the right and the budget constraint will be flatter. As a result of the change in price, we have a new optimal bundle, which I'll call bundle B. And at bundle B, we're consuming X1 star star level of good one. What I'm interested in here is thinking about this total change in the consumption of good one, which is equal to this length here. And what I'm going to do is think about this total change as being itself composed of two parts. The first part I'm going to call the income effect. The income effect occurs because the price change leads to a change in our real income. Now, what I mean by real income is the purchasing power of our income. Since good one is now cheaper, my income can now go further. I can buy more of good one, more of good two, or more of both, depending on my preferences. That the price of good one has decreased means that my real income has increased. The change in consumption of good one that is bought about because of the change in real income is called the income effect. The other thing that has changed here is that good one has become cheaper relative to good two. Now, typically we tend to substitute away from more expensive goods towards cheaper ones. So if apples become cheaper than oranges, we tend to buy less oranges and more apples. In our case, the decrease in the price of good one might mean that we buy less of good two and more of good one. We're substituting away from the more expensive good. 
any change in consumption that is due to changes in the relative prices of the goods, well, we're going to call that the substitution effect. Now, it's worth noting that sometimes we describe these changes in terms of changes in opportunity cost. In our case, the opportunity cost of good one has decreased. The way to think about this is that if we're already exhausting our income at any point and we buy one more of good one, now that the price has dropped, we have to give up less of good two than we did before because good one is cheaper. A nice connection to make here is that this decrease in opportunity cost is evidenced by the flatter budget constraint. So we're going to divide the total change in our consumption of good one into the sum of our income and substitution effects. In terms of our diagram, we can start by seeing the substitution effect. And what we're going to do is we're going to pivot the budget constraint around the indifference curve until we have a new interim budget constraint, which has the same slope as our new budget constraint or BC2, but we're going to stay on the original indifference curve. Essentially what we're trying to do here is change the relative prices or the opportunity cost, but we're keeping our level of utility constant. Now this will give us a new point of tangency and a new optimal bundle, I'll call it bundle C. The consumption of good one in this bundle is equal to X1 prime. Now the change in consumption from X1 star to X1 prime, that will be our substitution effect. And essentially, again, what we're trying to do is just isolate the effect on our consumption of just changing the relative prices. Now this interim budget constraint is the same slope as our new budget constraint. To get the income effect, we're going to shift out that interim until we get to our new. And once we're there, we get to the new consumption bundle, that's bundle B. The difference between X1 prime and X1 star star is going to be our income effect. So that's the visual decomposition of our total change in consumption of good one into our income and substitution effects. The take home here for the diagram is that we pivot, but stay on the original indifference curve and then we shift. So the pivot, see what's happening to our consumption of, of good one, that's our substitution. And then we shift to the new bundle, which here is bundle B, that's our income. So there is heaps more to say here. For this introduction, I will leave it here though. I hope it did help. If it did, please like and subscribe. Otherwise, have a really great day or night.